Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting a game between Mouse Sports, Moro, and TSL Pole. It is a TVZ on Daybreak, and yes, this is another MLG Winter game. So that means it is a BO3. We are in game number one, and yes, I will be casting all the games in this entire series, and I can't wait to see exactly what happens because Moro, he is one of my favorite players. He is. He has been keeping a low profile lately, back in the beta and when StarCraft 2 first came out, this guy's name was absolutely everywhere, but has kept a low profile lately. I don't know exactly what he's been up to, but I assure you, he is still pretty darn good. And Polt, we all know and love this guy. He is a very talented, very intelligent. And he has just such good positioning in almost any fight he ever does. And his micro is superb. The one thing I've noticed from Polt is his uh, macro does tend to slip a little bit. He is not one to ever Q units. So whether his macro slips or not, that is a question. Because he always like has more production buildings than most players. Like Tasia, he'll always have one thing queued up like when... A unit's three quarters of the way done. He looks at it, he's like, okay, I can start the next one now. Polt, he generally doesn't start a unit until his current one does finish. And if he has money, then he gets more production facilities. So he definitely macros a lot different than the standard Terran. Whether it's better or not, I don't know. But Polt, his uh, um, matches don't lie, he is good. Muro is sending out a drone scout that looks like it was at 13 or 14. Going to be heading over to Polt's base to see exactly what he's up to. And seeing the gas, I mean the barracks first, is just a big tell. I mean, this is very common, don't get me wrong. The barracks finishing at 245 means it came down at 12. You see that about 90% of the time. The other 10% or maybe even the other 5% of the time, you do see the gas before the barracks. And what the Terran's trying to do there is either go for an insanely fast stir put or try to abuse the fact that some Zerg players get a later gas on maps like uh, Daybreak and Shakura's Plateau. So we'll see when Muro ends up getting his gas. But the double Hellion is really just there to exploit that fact. Because you get up four Hellions when you're supposed to have two Hellions. And then you can do a run by into the main and deal a lot of damage. So that is the whole thing about going for the gas before barracks. I do talk about that quite a bit since... Well, there's nothing really to talk about in the beginning of the game. It really does happen, though. So, just keep that in mind. We do have the Marine on the way out. Gonna be doing a little bit of poke. We have an SCV out for Polt. Gonna be building this bunker. Muro does see it. And again, I believe he knows it's not... Yeah, he saw the gas, so he knows it's not a 2 racks play. So that's why you see him only pulling about 3 drones to go deal with this. This one drone gonna be going back on the SCV. Those 2 drones don't want to chase him too far. The overlook going up on the high ground. Bunker gets cancelled, the SCV is leaving, Lings are out on the field, so Muro has handled that very well, not taking any loss, not losing too much mining time. Polt, just kind of doing a little bit of a fake aggression. If the Bunker gets up, well, he can do a lot of damage. If the Bunker doesn't get up, he doesn't really get that far behind, so it's not really a big deal for him to do something like that. And, uh... We do have the Hellions now on the way out, a tech lab being built on this barracks, and Polt is definitely not one that shies away from the Marauder Hellion opener, but since he is getting this expansion, I think this may just be for combat shields and getting Marines. We'll see if he does get Stimpak with it. Maybe he'll get Stimpak and not combat shields. We'll see what one. I believe it will be combat shields looking at this build. Spinecrawler is on the way up. And that Ling is going to be taken out. And Stim does get started for Polt, so Polt will be going for Stim, which means he is going to get a Star Port right away. That Star Port should finish, and he should have Medivacs out around like 9.30, 10 minute mark, and do some type of push out. We do have him going to be stopping at these four Hellions, maybe all six, but four is generally when players do stop. Muro trying to get his creep spread up, putting his spine collar with his creep timbers. That means he can inch it up, and then the spine crawler can do another hop. There are four Hellions out now, so Muro has to be really careful. Canceling this one tumor. This one is going to be going down. Polt is going to attack his own Hellion, it looks like, to finish that one tumor off. Uh, trying to figure a way where he doesn't have to do that. Sees this one going to be hitting it, but it does a... Uh, stay up, I believe it is. No, 
Oh, does end up taking that. And he was attacking the Spine Cola. That is how he took out the two Mosbacks. He can't see that, can he? But no, he knew it was there. The Spine Cola, it was in position. So Moro making a small mistake there. You never want to put your Queen or Spine Cola directly behind a Tumu because Hellions can end up doing that. And nice job by Polt. Always putting the injured one in front. So he split the damage of that Spine Cola between all of his Hellions. We do have Polt now putting a Supply Depot at the bottom of his ramp. Going to start that Sim City. And a stir port has been started. It's not starting on the uh, reactor. The factory is building another one. Most likely this will be swapping off. Taking the reactor. And Port will be having a lot of Marines in the immediate future. We do have six Hellions out. So it is going to be Marine Hellion kind of. I think he is going to be stopping at the six. Just using this factory now to build some reactors. Of course he wants that stir port on the reactor. I would assume so. We'll see. Six Hellions going to be moving out. Since they went back home, they no longer have map control. Nomuro has spread that creep so far in such a short period of time. Taking his third base as well. There we go. Two medevacs on the way. Two Mos do get canceled by Moro as the Hellions do come down here. Spine Cola going to go on the edge of this creep just so he can safely take these tumors, Or at least more safely spread that creep with the tumors. And there's two medevacs about to finish, and it is 9-10 in the game. We'll see if he ends up moving out with these two medevacs. Dranley Terrans love moving out at the 10-minute mark, just in case Muta play is on the way. Spire has started for Muro. And we'll see if Polt sees these gases. Polt doesn't see any of the gas coming by Muro, so he has no idea the Muta play will be coming in. It's a little bit odd to do Muta play when Muro is getting this 1-1 one, one upgrade. So he's making a small deviation from standard Muta play. I don't think he's going to be massing Mutas. I think he's just going to make a handful of Mutas, try to force some Spine Crawlers, and just really stick at that lair attack. Because Muro, he isn't one of those players that go up to the 13-14 minute hive. He stays on lair for a very long time. Deals a little bit of damage with his Mutas, and then also deals a lot of damage with his Infestors. And then he goes up into that hive. He uses the Mutas to prevent drops. And he uses the Infestors to kill massive amounts of Marines like anyone else does. There's Hellions now taking control of this one Watchtower. And now going to be taking out a lot of those tumors. Is he going to get the one up there? Yes, he does. So Muro's Creep does get pushed back quite a bit. And even these three tumors up here going to be taken out. The Queen is also going to go down. Queen, not a huge loss, but all this creep, that is a pretty big loss for Muro in terms of the creep spread, but he does have it going up through this north end. Another scan is going down. Polt does not like that creep one bit, taking out four more tumors, and then just going to be going back down. There is this one tumor that is still alive. And again, you have all these tumors on this northern end, but I think a scan is going to be going down and going to start taking out all these tumors. There we go. Holt does not like any of that creep spread. Going to be pushing him all the way back to Moro's base. Moro does have a Ling just watching for Polt's third base. The Marines decided not to move out as soon as those medevacs did come. He is moving out at the 12 minute mark and does see Mutas now so he knows Mutas are on the field and he kind of missed his timing to move out. He needs to get some anti-air up which he already has a missile to it. Did he throw a scan? No. He didn't. He is getting another missile turret up in his natural. So now he is safer to move out. The mutas can still stay over these bears. There are enough mutas to kill when the marines pop out one at a time. Moro though is going to be. Is he respreading this creep yet? No, no, he isn't. He is taking his fourth base. And Polt seems to want to take his third base. The Hellion's going to be coming down, taking out that one link, just kind of getting a feel for each other. Neither player wants to be too aggressive right now. Muro does put Lings out, and since he doesn't have his creep going all the way here, he still wants vision of this area, so he is going to be leaving Lings around. And this is the thing that Muro does so well. Once he gets Burrow and Bane Lings, these Lings that he just has randomly out on the map are actually going to be Bane Ling bombs. And that just can be so, so devastating to any Terran player, as one Bane Ling can change the course of an entire battle. And here we go, a bunch of Lings are going to be coming in. Looks like he may want to do damage to this third base. Now he's just backing off the Hellions. Just keeping an eye on and these links going both ways. And two Hellions, or maybe them all went down just there. 
Yeah, he only, he doesn't have any more Hellions, so all six Hellions have been dealt with, and Muru now going to be spreading that creep back out on the map, going to be retaking all that, does have creep going booth at the middle of the map and the north side yet again, trying to connect all his bases with creep. And that one overlord is going to spot a few Marines, Polt is walling this off to be a little bit more effective against Ling run buys. All these meters coming in. Will they kill this one SMV? That will be actually really big. Medivac does heal it. The supply depot does get canceled. A bunch of links are going to be running in. Those Marines are at 1 0. Muru is at 1 1 right now. Just about done with 2 2. Does take out that one bunker and now going to be just getting back out of there. Doesn't have the 2 2 done just yet. He has started his passion glands for his infestor, so he is going to be staying at a very late layer compared to the normal Zerg, and a lot of Banelings have been morphing. 25 Banelings, and he is also going to be getting burrowed. Does have Baneling speed. And Polt has to be careful. Does have three tanks up here, and those Lings do not want to go up there. Nice split by the Marines, also getting some Missile Turrets to deal with those Mutas. And now Polt will have to... Uh, Mainly just defend here because this is where Muru is going to be attacking since there are no tanks. Has enough Banelings so we can just bust through that wall and go straight for those Marines. But there's not even that many of those. So we'll see if Muru ends up exploiting that fact. Of course, he doesn't know it. Polt does put up sensor towers so he can kind of see Muru's force coming. Muru wants to poke back in with these meters. Do what damage he can. He's going to be trying to take out this one supply depot. Doesn't get it. It is a very injured. We'll only take four Banelings now to take that out. Three more if he gets one more volley of Mutas. And in the same time, he is going to be taking his fifth base. A few Banelings going up to this north end. Scan is going to come down from Polt, and all those Banelings do go down. Three Banelings, not a huge loss. And it looks like that's enough to tell Mo I want to go for this. Going to be taking out the one Supply Depot up there. Now has to target this one tank down. Mr. does go down instantly. The third base does lift. And there's a lot of Marines right there that are going to be getting hit by Banelings. Almost no micro by Polt. And that, that is not common. He kind of just stood there and took that like a man. Muro still at around 200 supply. Only killed eight workers there. Supply depot and gas is on fire. Those things may possibly be going down. The refinery does fall. And now the supply depot will fall as well. Taking out a few more SCVs. Muro staying at 200 supply. He is getting infestors right now. I don't believe he's getting the hive. He already has it. That's why. So we will be seeing a greater spire. There it goes, actually, right now. Gonna be starting that pole. He is gonna be moving out. Muro did sacrifice a lot of banelings. So now is his time to move out. And we don't have any bird banelings along the way, but these lings are gonna be coming in. Fungal Ghosts go on those tanks and no siege from Polt. At the same time, he is dealing with an attack down here, but all these mutas are going to be going down. Those Marines do stem up, and Muru lost all of his mutas, but Polt is going to lose majority of his tanks right now as these Infested Tans do finish the last one off, so both of the players kind of lost their attack that was going around the map, the mutas and the tanks. So now both players are going to have to re macro up. However, Muru may have wanted those mutas. Polt, he probably doesn't care all that much about the tanks soon as those brute lords do hit. He is still building them, but those will definitely go into Thors, I believe, once brute lords start coming up, because you don't want to have mass tanks against brute lords because they will just end up killing your own army. Muru has a lot of bailing bombs along the southern side and now has placed them along the northern path. You can just see them all split up, even two up here. And uh oh. Holt gonna be moving these bailing bobs right around the same time the brood lords come out is just so devastating because you need marines to take out the brood lords because Polt doesn't have any vikings and these bailing bombs are just gonna make marines obsolete and it does pass over one same time Muru is gonna be attacking down here takes out this one bunker puts a few infested tans up fungal growth goes down on that mineral line all those SCVs will be falling we do have Polt moving ahead. The Ur bailing bombs here. Will this one go off? Marine stem and they start splitting. Very nice job by Polt right now. Big phone goes by Muru. He can't do another one right then and there. And uh, looks like Muru has done quite a bit of damage. 
Bailing Bomb still not going to be detonating. We do have a handful of Marines going to be going up here. Mo does see them once, and he's going to see another force. They do on Burrow and take out a small group of Marines. Broodlords are now out. Those Bailings have also unburrowed and moved on the ramp. Scan does go down, sees them, and now he knows how dangerous he was, but oh my god, just walks over another two. And he's going back. And that was a lot in the deep red now. Marines have just enough armor to survive that bailing bomb. Only one. You generally use two bailings, but those medvacs are going to be healing up all the Marines. The Fungoth will insta-give them, but it looks like Holt is going to be falling back. Moro definitely has a lot of bailing bombs out and not using them to the best of his ability. But he is still, I'd say, ahead in this game, getting even more infestors out. Going into the workers killed, he has killed 30 now. Doing all that, getting the Fung Girth off on this place was a huge. Port is going to be going out to do a drop. And this is what Port ends up doing when it comes to this stage in the game. Once Infestors come out, Burrow does have two Infestors burrowed. And he could have unburrowed and Fungal Girthers and taken them out. That would have been a pretty darn cool move. And those Metavacs are going to be on the way. And they will be dropping on off. The Queens are going to be trying to defend this, but they can't. They are going to be falling back. He has a lot of energy on those. Wants to use it for, I guess, maybe um, Spawn Lover. Doesn't want to lose his Queens. Fungal Girls going down on all those Marines. And now they will have to be retreating. And both those Metavacs do fall. At the same time, we have a handful of Marines right here. Fungal Girls onto the Baneling Bombs. And that is how you do it. All those Marines do go down. That is the bailing bomb we wanted to see. And if you're wondering how pros have such good map awareness, a good thing to do, it's going to sound crazy, but ladder without any game sounds on. No game sounds at all. And just play the game every day for a week, and your map awareness will get pretty darn good. Because when there's like one Marine attacking all of your drones, you won't hear the sound, and you won't know. And then you just feel like, oh my god. That whole time I just wasn't paying attention, lost so much. We do have those infested hands going to be taking out the bunker. And now chasing down two of the Marines, getting one of them. Polt just going to be trying to run this away. Now turning around, losing this second Marine. Just in time for the infested tans to realize what they did and commit suicide. Going to be doing another drop, but Muro, he's looking like he is unbreakable right now. Bunches of Broodlords coming down. There's no way Polk can just engage this force. Leaves a few Corruptors or a lot of Corruptors so he can deal with Vikings. But uh, Polt, what he's known for is uh, just doing all these drops, being constantly aggressive. Drops going down at both bases. Going to just try to kill all of Muro's buildings before Muro can kill his. And, uh, well, Terrans do, can do that if they don't react to these, uh, drops that do go down. Because, well, Broodlords are just so slow, but Muro, you can see, taking out one medevac and almost getting both of them before the Marines do drop. But a handful of Marines do come down. Those Corruptors can't do anything. Fung growth on those Marines and Banelings do clean that drop up. These, this is not doing any damage whatsoever to Muro. And Fessitans and Fung Goat to clean that up. These medevacs will be falling back home. And Polt's got to be scratching his head now. He's like, okay. Well, that didn't work. And Moro just spreading his creep even further. Going to have the entire map. This one Overlord going to be spewing it because I guess he doesn't have any tumors right here. Two random banelings. Marine's going to come start putting an end to this creep spread because... If Mo gets the creep into his army, then that is just devastating. One bailing goes down, another scan does get placed. Mo has a handful of infestors and a well the same number of brood lords. Now gonna be moving in. Not too many Vikings from Pole. Same time we do have another drop geared up to go. There is a infestor right here. Will he get the fung girth off on him? Doesn't look like it. Fung Girth going down right here just to absorb any damage possibly, but he has Broodlords out, so I don't know exactly what that's for. Maybe just anti-air against the Vikings. These Marines do take out that infest. No, the infest is sitting right here, but uh, can't really kill that. That base may fall. Muro, though, just focusing on this main attack. 
over in the center of the map, and those Corruptors now can be taking out all the Vikings. Fungal Goats going, those tanks are on siege so they don't kill each other, but there's almost no more anti-air left. These Thors are left, they're at 2-0 upgrades, the Birdlords are at 2-1 upgrades, and they're actually going to be retreating. More Corruptors do come in, takes out the medevac, now going to be taking out the Vikings, absorbing Thor volleys, which is also pretty darn big. More Marines are coming. Polt is going to be finishing off that one base at the top left for Moro right about now, it seems. Marines are getting underneath these Broodlords. Lynx coming in to try to help, and those Marines do fall. Moro still has a few Broodlords left. I thought I saw a transfuse, but I don't believe. Maybe that was a Broodlord just finished morphing. The base does fall. The medevac is going to be moving. Moro does burrow a bunch of drones. The PF does fall. Moro looking like he is in the lead. 193 supply to 122. Marines going to be coming in, and there's Lings and uh, Brutalers just to be cleaned up. Has Banelings down, and now Changelings also running ahead, getting a view of the army, and now just chilling out. Those are going to be the lazy Marines, trying to set an example right now, saying, hey, be lazy, and we're staying alive. You can do the same thing, guys. Just don't attack, and they won't attack you. But those Marines, apparently they know the Changelings are out. And there goes the GG by Polt. Muro gonna be taking game number one in this BO3.